This is a GCSE Maths Edexcel Foundation Paper 2 in 20 minutes so that you guys can revise four times as fast. So question number one, write 6184 correct to the nearest 100. That is going to be 6200. Write 0 0.7 as a fraction. 0 0.7 will be 7 out of 10. That's our final answer. Change 9 metres into centimetres. Well, 1 metre equals 100 centimetres, so 9 metres is going to be 900 centimetres. Simplify 3 times 4t. Because everything's being multiplied, times the numbers and then times the letters. Because there's only 1t, it's going to be 12t. Here is a list of numbers. One of these is a multiple of 5. Multiple means in the 25 times table, so 25, 50, 75 or 100, which is our answer. Sherry has a fair ordinary dice. She rolls the dice once. On the probability scale, mark with a cross the probability that Sherry gets the number 7. That is going to be a 0 because it's a fair ordinary dice that only goes up to 6. Mark with a cross the probability that Sherry gets an even number. That's going to be half because you've got 2, 4, 6 out of 6 numbers in total. We have a triangle. Measure the length of AC. Now, because this is on a screen, I do not know the exact length of this as it would be on A4 paper. Let's keep it simple and say it's five centimeters. You would just measure that with a ruler and put your answer in. Measure your angle at B with a protractor. Again, I'm gonna say that's about 100 because that's what it looks like, but measure it with a protractor on an actual exam. Here is a different triangle. QP equals QR. So that one is the same as that one. And when two of those sides are the same, it means that these two angles are also the same, and this is an isosceles triangle. The diagram shows three motorway service stations, P, Q, and R, on a map. One centimetre equals four kilometres. That's going to be useful. Work out the real distance from P to R. So 8 plus 16 equals 24 centimetres, and 24 centimetres, if one centimetre equals four kilometres, 24 centimetres is going to be 96 kilometres. That's going to be our final answer. Again, this is a calculator test, so feel free to use a calculator if you want to. Here are the first five terms of a sequence. Write down the next term. You can see we're increasing by five every time, so it's going to be 28. Write down the ratio of the second term to the fourth term. Second term is 8, fourth term is 18. Simplest form, just like a fraction, we divide both sides by the same thing. So we can divide both by 2 to get 4 and 9. This graph can be used to find the cost of parking a car in a car park for 12, up to 12 hours. Use the graph to find the cost of parking a car for 4 hours. So you find 4 on the hours axis, go up, and you can see that is going to cost you £6. Justin drives in at 8 o'clock in the morning. When he drives out, he has to pay £9. So again, we find 9 on the cost. So that means Justin was in there for 6 hours. So 0800 plus 6 hours is going to be 1400 hours, so that will be or 2 p.m. The table shows information about the weights of a people in a hotel lift. Show that the total weight of the people in the lift is less than 1200. So I would set up another column on the side of this to say weight times the number of people. So that's going to be 40, 100, 4 times 60 is 240, 70 times 5 is 350, 240 and 90. We can then add those up and that will be our final answer. That leaves us with 1060. 1060 is less than 1200, so that is correct. Again, probably provide a little bit more of a sentence rather than just putting this. But that is all your workings and that should get you three marks. Shape A is reflected in a mirror line to give shape B. On the grid, draw that mirror line. There's multiple ways you could do this, but just by trial and error, I can see that the line is going to be here where I've put this red one. Again, you can verify this by just checking that the distance away from each corner is the same on both sides. So again, here you've got two and a half, two and a half, and that is correct. Alex is asked to reflect shape P in the X axis. Here is the diagram Alex draws. Explain the mistake. Alex has reflected it in the Y axis to go across there, not the X axis. And that is the sentence I would put if I was in the exam. There are 50 teachers in a school. This is 1 16th of the total number of people in the school. So 1 16th equals 50. Probably the easiest way to do this, the total number of people in the school is going to be 16 out of 16. So we can do 50 times by 16, and that's going to be 800. And that's our final answer. Packets of sweets are put into boxes. 
Each packet is a cuboid with those dimensions. Each box is a cuboid with those dimensions. Work out the greatest number of packets that can be put into each box. The first thing I would do is convert those millimetres into centimetres. Next we can work out the volume of one of the packets by multiplying these three together. And that gives us 96 centimetres cubed. And I'm going to call that VP for volume of the packet. And now if we multiply those three numbers together for the box, we can work out the volume of the box. And now if we do the volume of the box divided by the volume of the packet, we get an answer of 864. And that is our final answer. Here is a fair ordinary dice and a fair eight-sided spinner. Charlie throws the dice once and spins the spinner once. Is Charlie more likely to get a number less than three on the dice or a number greater than five on the spinner? So let's call this situation one and situation two. A number less than three is going to be one or two. The chance of getting that is one out of three. For situation two, a number greater than five on the spinner is going to be six, seven or eight and that is three out of eight. Now we need to see which of those fractions is bigger. The easiest way to do that is gonna to be to find a common denominator just like we do when we add or subtract fractions. So the best common denominator here will be 24. So we've multiplied three by eight to get to 24, so that's eight out of 24 for situation one. And for situation two, we've multiplied the denominator by three, so that's gonna be nine. So the right-hand side is actually gonna be more likely so you would write a sentence that says a number greater than five on the spinner is more likely. And that's your final answer. Paulo drives at an average speed of 56 kilometers an hour for one hour and 45 minutes. What is the distance? So we know the equation speed equals distance over time. We can turn that into a triangle just like this. And if we want distance, we know that that's going to be speed times time. 56 kilometers per hour multiplied by now to keep this simple you want to convert this into just hours so that is going to be 1.75 hours because 45 minutes is three quarters of an hour and then if we multiply that in our calculator we will get our final answer and that gives us 98 kilometers there are three cinemas a b and c the mean number of seats per cinema is 380 there are 350 seats in a 250 in b work out c so this is something called reverse mean we know that to get that 380 number, you'd have done A plus B plus C divided by 3 to get the 380 because when we do mean, we add them up and divide them by how many there are. If we now replace this A with 350, replace the B with 250, C is the only unknown in this equation now. If we reverse the dividing by 3, that 380 beforehand would have been 1140. Next we can combine the 350 and the 250 to make 600. And then if we take away the 600, that leaves us with 540 seats. And that is our final answer. Asher buys 180 cans of cola. The cans are sold in packs. There are 12 cans in each pack. Each pack costs £3. Work out the total cost. So, 180 cans... And if there are 12 cans in each, you can divide that by 12 to work out how many packs. That is going to be 15 packs. So 15 packs at £3 each is going to be £45. That's our final answer for that one. Ethan buys a box of 24 cans of lemonade for £7, 330 millilitres in each can. Work out the cost of 100 millilitres of lemonade. So 24 cans is £7, and in each can there is 330 mils. So 24 times 330 is 7920. That is the same as that £7. And we want to get that down to 100 millilitres. So if you do 7920 divided by 100, that tells us that to get between those two, we need to divide by 79.2. Again, there could be other ways you break this down if it's easier which means that we can divide 7 by that same number, and that gives us an answer of 0.0883 pounds, which is going to be 9 pence to the nearest penny. 240 people work at a factory, as you can see here. 150 have a car, so that's going to be 150 in there, which means 90 do not. 110 have a bicycle. 65 of the people who have a bicycle do not have a car. So 65 people who don't have a car have a bicycle. So 110 in total have a bike. So that's going to put 45 up there. 150 here means that this gap has to be 105 and this gap has to be 25. What percentage of the 150 people who have a car 
also have a bike. So bearing in mind this is out of 150, if they also have a bike, that's 45 out of 150. We can put that in our calculator as 45 divided by 150, that is 0.3, so that is the same as 30%. Work out this value, write down all the figures on your calculator display. Literally put exactly that in your calculator. And the answer I got was 1.76527923. As it says, put all the figures down, make sure you get them all. Work out the value of the reciprocal of 0.625. With a calculator, put in the decimal, it's going to give you a fraction. So we know that that is equal to 5 over 8. The word reciprocal means you flip it. So if we flip that, it's going to be 8 over 5. Write down 60 as a product of its prime factors. So to do that, we make the tree. 30 and 2. Circle the prime numbers as you go. 5 and 6. 3 and 2. And as a product of its prime factors, 60 is therefore 2 squared times 3 times 5 product because you times them all and prime factors because they're prime numbers that are factors. There are 48 counters in a bag. There are only red and blue counters in the bag. Number of red to the number of blue is 1 to 2, so there's double the number of blue. Helen has to work out how many red counters are in the bag. She says there are 24 red counters in the bag because 1 is half of 2 and 24 is half of 48. That is not correct. So because, as I said, the number of blue is double the number of red, it's going to be no, because when we share a ratio, we add up the numbers first. So that's probably a bit overkill for one mark, but it gets the point across for anyone who doesn't quite understand it. I guess a simpler answer would be, if there was 24 red ones, you would also have 24 blue ones, which would be a 1 to 1 ratio, not 1 to 2. Minus 2 is less than or equal to n, which is less than 5. Write down the greatest possible value of n if n is an integer that is going to be 4 because it cannot be 5. On the number line below, show this inequality. So we find minus 4, we put a solid dot down there. We find 1, we put a hollow dot there, or circle even, and then we put a line between them. That's our final answer. Solve this. As always, don't be scared by this symbol. Treat it exactly like you would in equals. So 2 fifths of g minus 4 is less than 6. First of all, deal with everything that isn't touching the g, that's the minus 4 here, so we can add 4 to both sides, which is going to give us this. And another way of writing this fraction to make it a bit easier is 2g over 5. So then we can multiply by 5 to get 50, and then we can divide by the 2 to get rid of that. So 25, g is less than 25. Here is a triangle and a rectangle. All the measurements are in centimetres. The area of the triangle is 10 centimeters greater than the area of the rectangle. This is getting slightly harder now. The area of the triangle, we know that is half base times the height. So if I put in one and two, area of one, half times the base, which is eight times six x. Half of eight is four, times that by six x, we get 24 x. And the area of two is gonna be five multiplied by four x minus one, because that's what the area of a rectangle is. So that is going to give us 20x minus 5 just by expanding that using the claw method. Now the area of triangle is 10 centimetres greater. So 24x equals the area of the square or the rectangle with 10 on top of it. So if we combine all this up, we're going to get a plus 5 on the end. We can take away the 20x to leave us with 4x equals 5. So x equals 5 over 4 which equals 1.25 if you were to put that in your calculator as a decimal. Last year, a family recycled 800 kilograms of household waste. 57% of this waste was paper and glass. The weight of the paper recycled to the weight of the glass recycled is 12 to 7. Calculate the weight of the glass. First of all, we need to work out 57% of 800. We can do that in our calculator very easily by putting 0.57 times 800, that gives us 456 kilograms. We now need to share that in the ratio 12 to 7. So 12 plus 7 equals 19. 456 divided by 19 gives us 24. So one unit of that ratio is worth 24 kilograms. And because glass equals 7 units of the ratio, we do 7 times that 24, which is going to give us 168. And that is our final answer. 
A number D is rounded to one decimal place. The result is 12.7. Complete the error interval for D. The lowest that number could be is 12.65 because that will round up to 12.7. And notice here it's a just a less than, so the highest that could be is 12.75. Tamsin buys a house with a value of £150,000. The value increases by 4% each year. Rachel buys a house, so first of all let's call this 1 and 2. Rachel buys a house with a value of £160,000, but it increases by 1.5% every year. At the end of two years, whose house has the greater value? This is compound interest, you have this in your formula sheet. So £150,000 multiplied by, we would say 1.04, because it's a 4% increase on the original one. And then we do that to the number of years as a power. So two years, and we put that in our calculator like that. That's the answer we get for the first one. And if I repeat exactly the same thing with the second one, and then put that in the calculator, you can see that Rachel's house will be the higher valued house. Here are five graphs. The tables show the equations of these graphs match the letter. First of all, let's look at the straight line graphs. These two are both straight lines, A and D. In here, you want to look for the equations that only have a single power of X. So just X on its own. We've got this one, and this one also doesn't have a power. Notice how this one has a negative gradient. These are just like Y equals MX plus C. The M value here is minus 2, and this has a negative gradient. So that's going to be A meaning this one must be D because that also has a positive gradient. The one over X graph, again, something to just remember is C. That's what they look like. The X cubed graph makes a funny kind of S shape. That is going to be E. And then that leaves our quadratic graph to be B, which is that famous U shape that you should be familiar with. That's when we have an X squared involved. And that sums up the end of that paper. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you found it useful. And I will see you in the next one.